Okay, all right, all right, okay. We should be getting good to go here. Let's go ahead and full screen that and get into this mode here. And we should be rocking and rolling. This is going to be a live reaction to the Wheel of Time trailer, giving uh, general thoughts and things along those lines, um, and then eventually getting into spoiler stuff. Uh, but not right now. Uh, let's go ahead and put this in the proper place. Save all that. And we should be good and golden, golden. All right. <clears throat> this is going to be honest thoughts and reactions uh, to the Wheel of Time trailer. I'm excited. This should be fun. Uh, it's been a minute since I did uh, some Wheel of Time looking in a deep dive in, so I'm, uh, I'm kind of interested to do this. Um, let's go into the control room here for the live stream. Make sure everything's good. Everything does look good. Nice. All right. Um, I haven't seen this yet. It's going to be a fresh uh, reaction. Um, and I'm hoping we see some improvements over some of the criticisms we had for season one. Uh, I think everything is uh, good to go now. Yeah. Um, I had to jump out of the Dusty Wheels live stream because uh, I didn't want to. I didn't know if they were going to be playing it live. And I didn't want to see if Matt was playing it live. I wanted my reaction to be fresh. So uh, we'll do a spoiler free watch through. Then afterwards, it's going to be spoilers. So if you haven't read the series, you're safe for now. But anyway. Um, let's go ahead and jump on into things. Someone's jokingly asking Daniel, are you a big Wheel of Time fan? It's been so long since we've done, like, severe Watt content. There are people who do not know that now. <laughs> um, so anyway, let's go ahead and jump on into it. Everyone has a choice. And every choice has a consequence. I'm bigger than my body. We didn't defeat the Dark One. We set him free. No one should have that much power. Again, this is a, a reaction from me, so I'm not trying to do like a, a full watch through of it or anything. If you want an undisturbed watch through, go watch it on your own and jump on back to this video. Uh, but okay, so just thoughts on this initial part so far. Uh, I still like the look of a lot of the things. They think I maintain in my praise of season one. The set design and costume design were pretty great. Um, Roseman Pike performance was good. I was just mainly the writing that I ended up having issues with and the visuals of the finals and CGI. Um, the song choice is weird. Is that Halsey? Please excuse my ignorance. I am severely uh, not a music person. I, I do not know music. I think that's Halsey. Uh, so interesting choice there. I don't dislike Halsey. It's just, okay. Um, a good shot of Rand. Uh, wait, do we even get that far? I don't know. Um, I'm really curious what they're going to do with Moraine with the changes from the book in season one. I won't get into because spoilers. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, that's Halsey. We didn't defeat the Dark One. We set him free. <laughs> No one should have that much power. Bigger than these <laughs> okay, I've long said the Wheel of Time is more a horror series than people uh, <laughs> realize. And they seem to at least be realizing that here a little bit. If we go back, which I think, which button is the go back button? Yeah, there we go. Um, oh, thank you so much for the $10 donation, Rune. Appreciate you and everything you do for Fantasy Fandom. Glad to be a part of the Goblin Clan. It's the Goblin Horde, but thank you. Uh, this is straight up monster nightmare fuel. Um, <laughs> holy crap. Uh, that is horrifying. I don't. I assume that's going to be a part of an acceptance test or possibly connected to what one of the Forsaken is doing here. Uh, they straight up said who this Forsaken is on their uh, um, Twitter, so I feel like it's not a spoiler for me to talk about it, but yeah. Uh, this is my biggest complaint so far. What the hell? I hate shots like this. Bunch of people sitting here. Stop it. I don't like this. Ah! Um, also, if you're going to do a mini-sided table, make it a hexagon, because hexagons are bestagons. Anyway, um, 
it seems like they're continuing Moraine, uh, as we all have seen season one now, uh, not having the power because she's drawing a knife here. So interesting there. Uh, all right, let's get back to where we left off. This just, I don't like shots like this. They look like bad cosplay to me. It's a little weird, but we'll get through that. Um, I like the Sean Chan here. The Sean Chan should be powerful and dangerous uh, as hell. And <laughs> one man's monster is another man's rule 34. You all are going to hell. Um, the Sean Chan, I like this because it looks like they, like there's just dead eyes in this person here. And they like that. They're kind of muzzled. That's cool. I like that. They're, they're getting the visuals of the costumes to start down. I'm, I'm here. And then this is a cool display of the power. And also I think we're seeing gold and some weaves, which is the color we've seen. So I'm hoping we're seeing some more colors after that. Ooh. Accept Together his test. Together we face the impossible. Yep, accept his test. But now in our separate corners of the world. Oh! Oh, can I talk about this because spoilers yet or no? Can I? Um, I don't know if I can talk about this for spoilers or not. I will wait until after we're f finished with our first watch through because interesting. Okay. Interesting. Protecting... Yosha Stradowski is offensively handsome. Just gonna say that. That man is offensively handsome. <laughs> Brand, guiding him, that is the only thing that matters. You can't control him. You know you have some. Wait, whoa, 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 did I see the taint there? That, no, that's just, is there? Yeah, okay, you're seeing some black interwoven there, so I think that's the taint. You know you have something inside you. Yes. Something that calls for blood. I want to know New map. how to control it. These two together, I am excited for that because these are two solid actors. I hope the writing for them is better. I want to see them together. The last battle's coming. Ooh. Wait, what? How? Where did that come from? What the f- <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Where did this come from? Wait, wait. Sean Chan, looking cool. Like the armor. That's nice. Wh where is this coming out of? Oh, oh, it's not coming out. Oh, it's just there. I thought it was ejecting like Wolverine claws for a second. And it's <laughs> like, how do you fit that in your hand? Control it. The last battle's coming. I want the whole world will be ours. If our friends are in trouble, why would that ever stay here? You have no <clears throat> conception of the power they need. You can't do this by yourself. There are many paths to walk through the night. It's not always the most powerful who write history. They know how hot their cast is. Can I just point that out? They are like, okay, we may have faults as a show, but we have cast gorgeous people and we are going to at least tease the hell out of a bunch of people with that. Like straight up, they know. And they're like, okay, everyone's shirtless. Everyone gets shirtless. It'll make up for any weaknesses we have. <laughs> The one. <laughs> Did you not see that? To survive. I'm tired of being a spoke in the wheel. That was a really weak shot. I'm, that zoom out, I hope that's not in the final project. I hope that's a trailer shot. You're not a spoke boy. Whoa, did I just see it? Wait, wait, wait. Did I just see a Potter power rot Control. sword? That's weird. Hold on. That's a power rot blade. Right? That's someone stabbing a merge all through the black with a trollic with a power rod blade. Okay. You're not a spoke boy. You are the water that turns the wheel itself. Okay, so now we're gonna just do final thoughts and I'm gonna get into spoilers. Uh, so, 
It still seems pretty YA leaning to me. I agree with one of the commenters here, which, hey, you know, if you're going to lean into making the Wheel of Time that, it seems like they're at least leaning into it and fully committing. Um, and, you know, the Wheel of Time was attempted to be marketed as YA at one point. For all you don't know, they started splitting up the books in two, which would have made it a 28-book series. I don't think they would have done the same in the New Spring. Um, and... Uh, I'm conflicted because it's like they couldn't do a tonal shift at this point to go fully to the to the books. Like, right, they've committed to changing the story and they're just they're they're going down this new route, this new interpretation. And I clearly have problems with the final product of that. There was obviously some hits to COVID in the final season. Um, there were some issues with the writing that I think were borderline crippling. And I think I ended up giving it like a six out of 10 at the end. Like I, I am partial to it because it's Wheel of Time, um, but I just wasn't in love with it. And... I don't know. I'm feeling mixed here. Again, this is a trailer. Trailers are lies. I think it's uh, important that everyone keep that in mind. Trailers are lies. Every time um, you see a trailer, it is cut together to just be as appealing as possible and not be reflective of the final product. That being said, aside from, you know, Halsey's fine. I, I don't hate her as an artist. It's just, it's not what I would have chosen musically. Um, this is still a cool looking trailer. I still love the costuming. I think we're getting some more interesting uh, colors for the weaving, which is good. At least I saw that in a promo image. I don't know if I saw that here. <clears throat> and we're definitely tack. I, some of the costuming also looked a bit weak. Like when Rand was in his hood here, that just kind of looked like, again, like a, a little not enough for me. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to, okay, let's do a bit of spoilers talk for at least book two of uh, the Wheel of Time and maybe into book three or four. Um, because that is what we're going to lean into. And I've seen some people make the case that like the costumes look so clean because this isn't medieval times. This is post-apocalyptic Earth. For those of you who don't know, yes, Wheel of Time is not medieval times. It's not Renaissance. It is post-apocalyptic Earth. Um, it is actually in the future of our planet. Uh, that is something lore-wise you should know. Um, that actually does justify some things. Like there's ruins that you find throughout the series that are like, I think it's like a BMW logo or Mercedes logo. Um, it's, it's, it, it looks, I will say like this, it looks like one step up. I'll give it that. Uh, but let's go ahead and do some spoiler talkage here for at least books two, three, maybe even four of the wheel of time. Um, because I don't know what they're combining and choice. there's things that could be taken either way. I'll lower the volume here a little bit. I, again, I, I like even the city design for the white tower. Um, Let's see. We didn't defeat the dark one. Shots like this, I always hope are just trailer shots. Because whenever I see them in the show, it's like, I mean, maybe he's just stopping here in his hike to take it in. But it feels very, like, contemplative the trailer shot for me. Um, that was a better VFX. Like, if I was from season one of the show and I had seen, like, the criticisms of the weaker VFX, that kind of, like, rip away disintegration... I think is a cooler way to put that. Uh, here we have some training in the White Tower. No, really can't. hoping we get actually diving into uh, Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve's training in the White Tower. Season one did a terrible job of communicating how the One Power works, all the nuances to it, and I really, really hope the, that is corrected in season two and they use the training that everyone goes through as an opportunity to do that. I will do a lot of forgiving in the first season for that not being done and just take it as part of their like running through as much as they can if in season two we do get that lore deep dive um, into how the power works. This guy, I don't mind his casting. I didn't mind his performance uh, in the last season. Uh, he is um, the most lethal Forsaken, in my opinion. And, but I hope we get him in Season 2 some, really build up how evil he is. I think it was a huge missed opportunity to not make him as insane as he should be. Um, but that's just my opinion. That is, like, the creepy stuff like that is the way to get me back on board. Um, is really like, oh, uh, okay, that's creepy. I like the horror. Um, okay, but then again, it's followed up by some weaker stuff where it's like, those visuals aren't perfect. You know, I hope they improve before the show's out. Uh, one piece on the 30th, and this, then this next day, gonna be a busy week for the goblins. Yeah, it is. Together we face the impossible. 
Why can't they make bigger rooms? I, I have I, on my last rewatch of the show, I noticed how bothered I was by how small so many of the rooms were. If this is where the accepted test is going to be, make it bigger and grander. I, I don't know. I always pictured it bigger and grander. It's just, I don't know. But now we're in our separate corners of the world. Okay. Spoil this is the first real spoiler talk we're going to be getting into. This is clearly land fear. Um, I warned you all about this. If you upset, I said that like three times. This is clearly Lanfear, beautiful woman playing her. I think they nailed that casting. But I saw a bunch of people being like, oh, she's supposed to be the most, most beautiful woman of all time. Lanfear changes her face. Like, d did you all collectively forget that? She was subscribed as incredibly beautiful. Then we see her real face, and then she is, oh my God, world-breakingly beautiful. So I'm pretty sure they're going to change actresses. And all these people who are like, oh my God, they didn't capture the person who looked. Yeah, there's supposed to be two different actresses who play Landfear. So <laughs> I don't understand that. Um, I think that was people who didn't actually read the books who just uh, wanted to be mad about something. I don't know. Like that was weird. But she's still a gorgeous actress who is stunning, and I was like, what are you all even fucking complaining about? Sorry, freaking YouTube. I said freaking if you play back the tape. Um, anyway, uh, I like the amount of physical contact she's making with Rand. This seems to be leaning into the he's a young, dumb kid who doesn't understand how he's being manipulated. I hope. Like, here's my thing. I hope for the writing, they keep the characters whiny and young, because they're whiny and they're young in the books. She is a gorgeous actress who's a bit more mature, and I hope she uses that young whininess to manipulate and control Rand. And then they grow out of that. Having young whiny characters is not bad writing. Season one had bad writing with whiny characters, but don't take away their whiny annoyingness because that's what makes them fun, dumb, young idiots to follow in the show, if that makes sense. I don't know. Um... Okay. This is, might be stupid. This may be my, this, this shot might be giving me the most hope that season one will be better than season two because this looks like Rand entering his, I'm kind of the cock of the walk phase. Like the fans have like different phases of Rand. There's mad Rand. There's, there's confident Rand. There's, you know, depressed Rand. He goes through a time though, where he's kind of like, I have this power and I'm going to use it. And I'm hoping Yosef Stradowski is transitioning us into that. And I would really like to see Rand start pushing into that territory. Protecting Rand, guiding him, that is the only thing that matters. You can't control him. Give us some of that fear. I'm So here's the thing. I was at the premiere. I met these guys in person. These people are so tall. All of the actors, I'm almost 5'6". I'm like 5'11 and three quarters. I don't give myself last quarter because people give me crap when I do. I was interviewing these people on the red carpet, like looking up at them. They are all so tall. Not related, but just wanted to point that out. You have something inside you. That's Elias. So that's our first voiceover of Elias Matura. He's being introduced, it seems, a bit later for Perrin because we do get him in book uh, one. But now we're getting a book two or season two. Uh, this intense Rand lashing out at Moraine and with it being Wheel of Time, I'm not sure if it's dream or real, but with what they changed for Moraine at the end of season one with her being depowered, it could be in reality. I'm not sure. Um, I also really like Perrin's yellow eye shot. That was cool, but I hope it doesn't actually permanently transform that fast. I hope it's more gradual, and that was like a dream thing. Um, I guess, yeah, if they if they do it, just change like this, I will think that's really dumb. Uh, Perrin's eyes, as far as I remember, they don't just change immediately. It's something people just notice. Like, I always, when people just kind of start noticing it, I'm always like, oh, it, it's a change that happened for him. And it's one of those things where it's like, if someone gets slowly tanner, suddenly you'll be like, oh, you're tan now. It's not something where people were like, oh my God, like your eyes are just yellow. Um, I mean, to people who didn't see them for a long stretch of time, but I think the people who were around him were like, oh, your eyes are kind of gold now. Anyway, I, I just don't want it to be that quick. You know what I mean? Like it could even be over the course of a day. Just don't make it like the Hulk turning into the Hulk. I think that'd be done. Dumb. That gives me hope. I want to see the darkest, bloodiest times in this series. And this is a Gwen Spoilers again, we're getting into for season two and the books beyond. Um, they changed immediately in book one. It was immediate. You got, you're probably right. Um, I just don't, I just don't want it to be that flash. I don't want it to go, Ugh. um, 
So I really hope we get Egwene being abused by the Shan Chan a whole, whole lot. Um, because, and don't get me wrong, not, that's not like some kind of awful sadistic way. I just think we need to have the Shan Chan set up as the most vile, despicable people that they are. And uh, the way to do it, in my opinion, is to make Egwene go through the hell with them. And that also provides Egwene with a lot of the ability to learn and grow and change uh, that she needs to to become what she does later on in the series. And I won't get into that because that's that's too late of uh, spoilers. Something that calls for blood. And here we have the big question of this season. Um, one of the few things that was universally praised in season one uh, was Barney Harris's Matt. Uh, unfortunately, he's out of the show. Leave the guy alone. He seems to not want to be bothered, so leave him alone. And now we are getting replaced with Donald Flynn. Um, incredibly difficult ask for an actor to step in and now be the you know person taking over a role that was pretty popular. And I really want to see and hope that he manages to knock this out of the park. It's a big ask, and it's going to be really impressive as he as an actor is able to come in and um, manage that. And I hope he doesn't just do an impression um, of... Uh, I hope he just doesn't do an impression of Barney Harris's Matt. I hope he does his own interpretation. I've settled on that. Um, let's see. Uh, they Okay, so someone brought up the fact that they don't actually abuse their uh, Damani that much to cause too much physical damage. That is something where I get why you need to change it for the visual medium. When you're writing in a book, you can write internal pain and abuse so clearly. Uh, but in a show, it would be really hard to communicate, I think, the same level of pain. So I'm fine with them making it external so that it bridges that gap that you get internally in the books to an external. It's just one of those medium changes that makes sense to me. Feel free to disagree. I want to know. That is, again, like, okay, good shot. I like that. I like what that's leading towards. I like what that's implying. Good. Just write it well, please. Please write it well. <laughs> How to control it. Oh, I didn't even notice that twitch my first time through. Did y'all see that? That was a good twitch. Watch him. He does a little madness twitch. And I think well, that's all right. Watch, watch, um, how to control it. Did you see that? Little details, little details I like. As I said, the performances have not been what's bothered me. It's been the writing. I tried book one, but it was very annoying. Felt like a Lord of the Rings ripoff. That's intentional. Robert Jordan has said on the record that he was trying to do his own version of Lord of the Rings um, for Wheel of Time, and then he uh, changed it, uh, and it grows and evolves way, way, way beyond that. And you are meeting teenagers. That's something to keep in mind when reading book one. These are kids, and they act that way. The last battle's coming. This, this gives me hope. They really seem to be stressing for this trailer that the Sean Chan are going to be the big bads. And I want that. I want them to be so awful because of what happens later in the series and so many moral failings that happen around them um, and ground that needs to be given because they are a force to be reckoned with. They are the big alpha military dogs. No individual nation has a even minor chance of standing up against them. Um, I really, really hope that they are solidified in this season as the most dangerous non-shadow threat. The whole world will be ours. That I like that. I, I think the costuming's a bit odd. Uh, it's not how I pictured Sean Chan. It is good, though. It's committed to a look. I like that they seem to be this zealot. This is ours, because that is what they are in the books. They are reclaiming what they believe to already rightfully be theirs. And so them stepping in and being like, <clears throat> and it feels like they're just taking back what they already wanted, that belief, that self, in, you know, ego they have. I really feel like that's being handled. Nice. Hold up. What was... Hold up. I want to look at this closely. That's a weak via. That... I don't know what's going on there. That looks strange to me. Um, oh, they're surrounded by Trollocs. Very bad CG Trollocs. Oh, my Lord. That looks like it's out of a PC game from the early 2000s cutscene. It looks like it's out from the Wheel of Time game cutscene. If you didn't know, there's a Wheel of Time first-person shooter game for the PC you can download and play. That looks like one of the Trollocs from that. That is rough. I hope that is improved. I think that's why they made it, like, one frame, because they're like, we still need to fix that shit. We'll just hope no one does a frame-by-frame. Frame. By the way, Wheel of Time fans... We're going to do a frame by frame. Um, 
I like what we're seeing with Egwene here. Egwene needs to be rough, needs to be someone who's willing to push back, and needs to be powerful, because she is a force to be reckoned with. And it looks like they're still using practical explosions for some of these, enhancing the CG. That's good. I like, again, like these dead-eyed Damani looking good. I This is all heading in a direction I'm fine with. That, you know, these are just the things. Oh, that was the accepted test being done. Give us more colors with these weaves, man. Come on. Give us more colors with these weaves. I don't know. I guess that, is that, yeah, okay, never mind. Hold up. There's two colors here. There's blue and white, so I guess they're using water spirit. That confirms they're going to be using colors and weaves. And you can just justify that in the tech in the show of like, well, our people didn't know channeling before, so I guess that's why they're now seeing the colors. But we were following Moraine; she was the only one channeling. Why aren't we getting full colors with her? I guess it'll be an inconsistency we all write off. But I'm just glad we're getting colors now. We had ever stay here. You have no it's not a pacifier; it's a muzzle, which isn't in the books. They use a leash, um, but I think they're changing that to be more of a muzzle thing. I'm not sure why. No conception of the power they use. You. you can't do this by yourself. Okay, if we get... Okay, so this is Aiel fighting Children of the Light, as you can see from the uh, costuming here, the sun. Um, I, will, just as a book fan, anytime I watch Children of the Light get their ass handed to them, I'm down. Um, we also got confirmed that they're using multiple colors for weaves from the promo images we're getting. This is supposed to be Avienda. That's been confirmed in casting. She's here with Perrin. Okay, and here is her, it seems like, just kicking White Cloak ass. And I really hope this is done like we got the Aiel fight in the first one, and the way we're having multiple actors moving across here. It seems to be a part two of that. I hope that's the case. You know, I can't really say, because they're just doing quick trailer cuts. They don't want to spoil it, if that's the case, so, fine. There are many paths to walk through the night. Okay, so the <laughs> very evil-looking actress playing evil person. It's not always the most powerful who like They're strapping us with Rand. Uh, Nynaeve finishing her acceptance test with the blood coming out with her. I like that. I like the blood. That's a good touch. That's a good touch. It makes it more real. It makes the impact of it. That's, that's the frustrating thing about this show. I have so many problems, yet at the same time, there's still choices where I'm like, that's a good choice, though. Mm, there are talented people working on this show, and I hope that means season two is stronger. Wait, what? That's going to be memed. That will be memed. There is no way that's not going to be memed. Good acting face. Like, I'm not judging anything. That will be memed. <laughs> I don't know why they made Rand bald, but yeah, Rand is bald. Uh, and jacked as hell. It's the ones who survive. Don't like this costuming necessarily, but all right. Oh, I can tell you why he shaved his head. As someone who has had to wear a hood that kept slipping off of the wind, if you buzz your head and put the hood up, it grips. Just say it. No, I'm kidding. That's <laughs> What if they justify him being bald because he accidentally does something with the power and burns himself, but he burns his hair off? I, I don't know. <laughs> Why is he bald? I got, I got no idea. That's such a bad shot. Okay, but then it, they follow up the weakest shot of the trailer, in my opinion, with a power rot blade being shoved through a merge roll. So I'm immediately back in. I'm like, okay, this is garbage. I really don't like this. Bad. To, oh shit. <laughs> to, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Because Wheel of Time, for those of you who don't know, kind of has lightsabers. You're not a spoke boy. You are the water that turns the wheel itself. How are they going to justify this scene happening? How? They've changed so much from the ending of book one. How is Rand going to end up talking to the Omerlin? What? That's where I'm frustrated. That's where I'm like, I don't know. I, I'm... All right. So. Cause like why I don't why wouldn't I have, I have no idea I don't know what they're gonna do for that those are my spoiler thoughts um, I am cautious is my feeling um, I feel like it's a good sh there's a good chance 
it's going to be better than um, season one because season one had COVID season one had all kinds of things around it. And, you know, a lot of sh shows take a while to find their voice. There's a lot of shows that have weak season ones and go on to be pretty good. Um, that being said, there's still a lot here that concerns me. Uh, I, I would say I am cautiously, mildly optimistic. And no matter what, as a big Wheel of Time fan, there's going to be elements to watching this that make me go, ah, and just be excited because I, I want to see things that even if they're not surrounded by greatness, just seeing a power rot blade on the screen makes me go like, cool. Um, so for me, yeah, I'm, that's kind of how I'm feeling overall. There's, there's hesitation. There's the people who are overly positive. There's the people who just hate on it as their full-time job and try to get rage about it because they emotionally tie themselves and the stuff too much. And there's people who try to tie this into being perfect when it's not. Um, I will say they had two options, either double down on their interpretation of Wheel of Time or try and backtrack into making it more like the books. This seems to be doubling down, and that's going to make some people mad. That's going to make uh, some people happy. It's going to be more marketable to casual viewers that way. And I think it, it's kind of going to be the right call for them in the long run, probably, because it's it, it would be confusing for the more casual people who haven't even read the books who are watching it, who are the people who are more positive on it overall, I feel, on average. Um, if they attempted that. So, you know what? As long as it realizes what it's trying to be better than season one did, we're in for a better season of television. Does that mean it's going to be great? Does that mean it's going to be the truest telling Wheel of Time ever? No. Um, wait, Trolloc Hooves at 119? Oh, oh, daddy. Let me see them. Wait. Where are the, where are the Trolloc Hooves? Give me them Trolloc Hooves. If you, don't, you don't be lying to me. I think you lied to me. Oh, no, you didn't. They're right there. Hold up. Let's look at these bad, these badass Trolloc hooves. Guys, God, that is so such a horrible looking Trolloc. I'm sorry, that is maybe the weakest VFX we've seen, but it's a trailer. A lot of times in trailers, VFX aren't done. But wow. That being said, though, um, let me let me go ahead and move this. Let me let me just move this right here. That's a thickum hook hoof. That that is a that is a thickum hoof right there, boys. That is a thickum hoof. Damn, she thick. <laughs> oh, that is a thick hoof. All right. Um, <laughs> anyway, everyone, that is my full thoughts on the season one trailer. Uh, like and subscribe if you have not already. Go ahead and uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for 500,000 subscribers. I will say that. And for backing the Kickstarter and getting it to nearly $270,000. That was insane. And I am going to go... Uh, continue to prep uh, big changes uh, for here for the channel and working on my fringe video. Um, clippity clop, those trickety trollic hooves are going to be stepping on my niggity neck, and I am so happy. <laughs> <laughs>